Hello everyone, Master Zeon 1001 here, and in this tutorial I'll be going over my workflow of using the Subtractive Mesh Kit to create sci-fi floor paneling. Um, starting off with a couple of whip shots, uh, just to kind of show um, what my results were. Um, as you can see, I'm working on becoming less crazy about it. So, with that aside, on the last episode of Modeling Ball Z. Alright, just kidding. But in the uh, patron exclusive chapter, I went over the process of actually building this subtractive mesh element. So if that's something that you're interested in, then go ahead and um, you know check me out over on Patreon. However, it isn't about that. It is about using this kit. So that initial video was actually sped up by like 1800%. It's like an hour compressed into like 30 seconds or 10 seconds or something. But um, starting out, I just put a couple of loops in here and beveled the tips. However, you want to apply the scale so the bevel comes out even. Then from there, you want to go into vertex mode and take these verts that get pushed down and bring them back up and snap. And now we have a square base with a rounded shape on top. Uh, this was something um, I noticed recently in um, some of Vitelli's work and thought it was a uh, interesting idea. Um, just having these uh, almost square panels that connect to each other um, while also having a square base for them to uh, have you know underneath as a foundation um, might have been the missing the missing piece of my previous attempts with the uh, in test so you know um, if you're not familiar with the way I am you know um, you know I have a Pinterest board called the next level that literally is all the things I aspire to wish to do you know so if you're on that list watch out it means I'm studying you so I'll turn on smooth give an angle of 30 that'll uh, you know make it look nice and we'll just select pieces bring it over and stick it on the top select the piece select the base mirror it to the other side using the mirror mirror tool it comes with introduction of ZBrush I mean uh, Blending away to paint and introduction to ZBrush for Blender users or introduction to Blender for ZBrush users. Um, if you're wanting that, that just basically allows you to quickly mirror things on the other side of other things. So after mirroring it, I just select that, select the um, the main piece, and Control minus. Um, the goal here is to you know bake this stuff into maps that can be used for low poly assets. However, the uh, creation process is the one that kind of takes it out of me, especially, you know, going into Indu, going into Photoshop, going into Substance Painter, coming back here, rendering it, waiting forever on a render. Um, you know, I would much rather just plug these shapes in and just see how they work. Now this little do that, I particularly enjoy. Um, however, there was a small issue with overlapping elements um, that caused a small glitch with this. Um, you'll see it here in a moment when I cut it in there. Um, where it doesn't appear and with this sort of stuff you know you can move it around a little bit and it'll, it'll, it'll show up and you just got to find that magic spot in which it doesn't uh, exploit your poor bevel distancing so this is something that uh, I ended up going back and uh, fixing I think at the end here um, but you know it's just one of those uh, experiences uh, a lot of people write me and they're like hey I'm having issues with the bull tool um, it's not working as, as anticipated and you know I just remind people that you got to make sure that the um, the butter is a denser than the knife or else um, who's cutting who this piece here also very awesome um, you know just a little cut and boom greats the greatest greats are cut in there I particularly love that piece and so even with these, you know, the um, series of circles, um, all I have to do with these is just place them where I want, cut them in there. They also have a nice bevel. And one, two, three, boom. Now, you see that I can move this stuff around after the fact, but because everything is so crazy, it just gets slow. Um, I distinctly remember this being faster in previous versions of Blender, however, it's really not anything I'm terribly concerned with, except for the part where I have to move stuff around because it is abhorrently slow. Um, but that pretty much is the workflow in action. 
So as I go through this, I uh, plan on extending this kit out and adding even more subtractive elements to it along with templates that'll um, serve as uh, level guides and you can basically, you know, cut up some um, create your, your sci-fi squares and then snap them into pre-built shapes to create a level in your own style but of a unique, um, of a preset, you know, shape. Which, if that doesn't make any sense, you'll see very shortly. This piece right here is pretty great. I'm just saying. Um, you just bring it in there, cut down, and it is suddenly a, uh, a depression in the shape. And, you know, in action, all it shows is just a surface transition, which are some of the nicest things to have you know reading on your your normal map but I look at it a lot from the top because I want to make sure that there's a rounded bevel uh, at the bottom of everything so that way you know I'm, I'm trying to think about it like a uh, like a ray like a baking ray and keep everything uh, capable of both being baked and transferred to the map now in this particular video I don't go over the um, the baking process that is something I um, I'll probably be doing later for the uh, patrons just to show the ending of this. However, I did want to, you know, drop a freebie just to you know, show you guys what I'm up to and to maybe give you all some ideas. Now, any smart man can go through and just build a subtractive mesh kit by just going around the net and looking at shapes that they wish they had. I mean, it's literally that easy. And also, I find that this is a good way to uh, build up an interesting shape library in my head while also um, you know, practicing hard surface design. Um, you know, the first couple of pieces I put up, I believe people were saying that you know, they were just too noisy, too much detail, too much stuff going on, and as a result, it um, made it a little hard to understand visually. But we look at the surrender, it looks good. I even have an uh, invisible ground plane underneath um, that's catching the shadows, which also comes with the same um, Right there, I selected a face, shift G, normal, isolated only certain normal facing faces. And by doing that, I can actually select pieces individually and voila, just instantly give that. Because of all the cut lines, it allows for easier separation. So this is definitely something that um, I can't stress enough that you should experiment with. Um, this part of the process even makes it where if I had to UV unwrap these painful pieces, I could actually hi highlight things by the normals, put seams around it, and it would lay it out in the um, most perfect possible way that you can get for something this painful. Also experiment a little bit with the scale, however, I'm trying to keep everything of the same size. But, you know, all in all, I consider this piece a success. Around this time, um, I was pretty impressed with the result and speed and was uh, quite proud of it. Now here's another thing is sometimes your cuts will create end guides and in order to fix it You just want to make sure that you have enough of an edge flow to determine it And then all I do is just select the end guides and turn them into triangles to make that part read smooth and proper So that's something you just want to keep in mind. I gotta look over these forms quite a bit um, You know afterwards and just make sure that everything is reading the way it's supposed to because if it's not um, things will get a little tricky and you, you don't want to realize way later that you did not build your model properly um, or that you have um, you know nasty end guns that don't have correct face shapes existing um, this is something I think I went over in the original bull tool videos where I was um, Discussing ingons and basically showing that an ingon is a polygon that doesn't quite know what shape it is. Unless it's planar. If it's planar, it knows what it is. But if you move any of the verts um, around, up and down, it, it, it quickly loses its shape and becomes something crazy, which is why whenever you triangulate it, it suddenly becomes some sort of pointy nipple. Um, now, if you're using Moto, you probably have Mesh Fusion, so you know you already have an easier time ahead of you. Um, another thing is, using the bolt tool like this without collapsing all these damn modifiers makes it slightly slow. However, 
the speed it takes to cut these things in there is still way faster and easier than if I were to try to cut it in there using other means. So that's something that is important to probably keep in mind. You know, if you're wondering why don't you just model this stuff, well, why don't you just model this stuff? I do not want to model this stuff, but I do want it. I just don't want to model it, if you know what I'm saying. So, continuing on, you know, I'll uh, take this object and probably put the origin to geometry so I can Alt-G put it back in the center and bring it up and cut it. And I was trying to move it up to Z on top view. As you see, that's uh, silly. I try to do it and I realize I put the piece all the way up in the sky. I'll bring it back down. Boop. And we just take that, move it down over here, and get it just blushed because of the uh, bevels at the top. Have it share the same materials. And I'll even go in here and select pieces and give them a different material. Now what's cool about this is you can actually assign materials and UVs to pieces that you're cutting in and those pieces will in turn be sent over into the other shape. The other thing is you can also use vertex colors and cut vertex colors into other shapes, which is unusual behavior. You know, when I first noticed it, I thought I was seeing a glitch, the greatest glitch ever. So you see, pretty much every time I cut it in there, it just gets a little bit slower, um, just because of the complexity involved here. Like, I'm pretty sure that this is not what they thought you would be using booleans for. You know, this is like a combo attack of like 20 booleans at once. In fact, I'm pretty sure in the next video I'll come back talking about, um, you know, rules of thumb or something. Uh, maybe, maybe using a maximum of five pieces or six or whatever because, you know, it does look a little noisy. You know, I admit it. But like I said, these are just demonstrations of you know, what this will offer. So as you see, these are in guns. There's no flow. So select normal. Get H to hide the alternate. We will give this a different material color because it's an manifold face selection. We give this one a different color selection because it is also a manifold face selection no matter how ugly it is. So for things like this, as long as you keep it fairly planar, you at least have that additional level of control to be able to use to your advantage. So the render size is something that changes quite a bit throughout this, however, that part isn't even relevant. Um, you know, I usually render things at a fairly decent resolution and just ramp it to 150 or uh, yeah, 150 or 200% in order to get additional detail out of that. So there's a lot of people who tell me that they didn't know that you could actually set the resolution to more than a hundred percent of what it is. You know, if you're ballsy, you try rendering out your model at a thousand percent of the default resolution. You'll see detail you never knew was there. But also, your resolution is going to be about a thousand times bigger. So, living in there. Now, with that, this piece is fairly complete. You know, I look at it thinking, you know, that's like futuristic hard drive. So maybe I should make a piece that's actually more like a floor. However, you know, I was making these panels thinking, you know, this this would be the third one on the wall. You know, it'd be like duck duck goose, you know, with these pieces. So I'm also thinking of their application at the same time. Um, another interesting tidbit is I could literally take this piece and cut this piece into another cube, which will yield some rather interesting results. Um, so now we're on to part two. Uh, part two, I went ahead and just selected pieces and brought them over to a duplicate of the initial shell. This is the same shell that I used for the baking, or actually I think I used a more simple version. It's actually a, a cube in the exact shape. And I start off with my favorite little grill. Dig it in there, it comes out fast. Uh, take this piece, this piece is a legend. Now clipping the edges of this is, um, in, my, in my opinion, uh, dangerous. And if I say the word dangerous, like you're 
going to get your door kicked in beaten to death by police officers over doing this, but you know what I mean. Um, this piece here, also a fan favorite, me being a fan of himself, which is weird, but continuing on, we'll just bring this up, scale it, and mirror it to the other side. So these things are especially awesome. This piece right here, one of my favorites. Um, stolen straight out the pages of the B-Man himself. Um, when I noticed the subtractive shape that was used here, it suddenly made it clear on what I have to do to my future generations of robots and their children's children, provided that my robots have children, on what I gotta do with them. This piece right here, also a very interesting piece. Um, I try to mirror it. Now the mirror tool is weird. Control M is the mirror. And sometimes the mirror is there, sometimes the mirror is not there. I don't know why the mirror disappears, but it does. Um, so every other version, it's there. But I'm starting to think that there's a glitch that is causing me to not be able to get the mirror at times. So it just drives me crazy. Anytime the mirror's not working, I just SF negative one. If you S, X, S, Y, S, Z, negative one. You're actually flipping your mesh inside out on the other side of a dimension. So that means once you apply the scale, the normals are flipped. Therefore, you must apply the scale, flip your normals. So just keep that in mind as a bunch of users. I'm not sure if that behavior is the same thing in Maya, but it is definitely one of the This piece right here, this clip, Primero, El Luchadore, Grande. This piece right here is awesome. Um, however, I was testing out the idea of using it like in an angle of just just cutting it in there and um, seeing if that'll give me a nice little bridge like you could uh, unscrew and flip this door up or whatever. And I thought that that looked pretty cool. Now to be honest, this is probably the point at which I probably should have just uh, went down one more level of detail and started putting in like itty bitty notches and stuff like that. However, I'm still excited about this kit. So I just keep cutting things in there even though um, it is getting slightly noisy. So, you know, if you decide to try this yourself, definitely. Um, sometimes less is more. Sometimes, sometimes it is, but not all the time, not when you're eating. Speaking of which, I had went somewhere to get someone to get something to eat, and was like, how much is a, uh, a Big Mac and fries? They told me a number, and then I was like, well, how much is it for a Big Mac and small fries? Shows how poor I am. And they were like, yeah, same price. So I walked out. So like, that's a logic error. Also, I think y'all ripping me off. But, you know, so that in, in those cases, less is also more. So, just to bring that example home. Also, I shouldn't be eating McDonald's. But, let's uh, get back to the tutorial here. Edge clips are also important. They show that, you know, someone can just come in with a screwdriver and just pop this floor up and take it out of here. You know, if I was in the future and there was some sort of side thug, I would just steal sci-fi floors, you know, out, out the corridor. You know, and be like, where'd you get these floors in your room from? You know, that looks like the landing base, like the bay where I land, right? So you leave me alone. So we cut into it, and we wait a minute, and we wait another minute. And you know, near the end, this started to get pretty crazy long. So... Yeah, less is more is definitely the uh, way to go when it comes to approaching the stuff. I know you think you won't fall, but if I could really give it all, if we started out blind, I could make you mine. All right. So now we're gonna take these pieces. This one here is a nice little doodad. However, I made the mistake of not hiding everything which was uh, possibly silly. But we're just gonna bring this piece down and clip it into the side. Hmm. 
something that I could go back and fix, however, I did not want to go through that. In fact, you'll, you'll see me try to fix it and play with the four minute when you'll start freezing a little bit because of all the modifiers at the same time. So we're just going to take a different clip and no hold hard, except for this hole at the top. So we'll just grid fill it, which grid fill will fill any hole that has the same metrical amount of depth, uh, even number of vertices. It doesn't work for uh, I mean, you could always just press F and Control F, or uh, F and Control T to uh, fill it with a phase and then convert it to a triangle, which a triangle is like, you know, fill in that geo, whatever. I don't care what you do, just figure out the best answer. So we can bring in our little dig hooks, and we wait, and we wait, and voila. So now, this piece is actually looking pretty good, so I'll convert it to a mesh. And I'll select this and this and the floor, select everything else, and move it to layer zero. And now, where there was once one, there is now two. And even with this uh, auto smooth on the side, I can set the uh, Auto smooth angle to like 22 and smooth it and actually get smooth surfaces, smooth transitions that everything above 22 degrees or below will, will be uh, split on the normal, which is also very handy. Now, I um, also want to throw in here in a hard surface tutorial where it's completely irrelevant that I'm working on a, a, a review for the not a review, but an updated version of the hair tutorial. Showing some of the techniques on making hair work better than Marma said using data transfer attributes later to get the anisotropy to go the right direction, which is important for making low poly hair. Um, if you've ever used parts of hair, you know it kind of takes forever. Uh, so, low poly hair sometimes can be a slightly better choice. So, moving on here, 
Basically, look at this thing, guys. And it's, it's a beast. It's a beast. And so that will wrap up this particular chapter. But I go through and I make four of these things, so... We'll make one more here. Uh, in between, in, in between the recordings, I just do the same. I just got to bring in the 400 cycles. Um, this piece here, I decided I want to add one more piece of my collection. So I start off with that one on the bottom. And I come to the other side. Um, this shape here is um, pretty, pretty interesting in my opinion. Like, it's uh, one, of my, one of my favorite shapes. Um, one thing that probably should have done at the end of was assign materials to my subtractive mesh kit before I started testing it. And that way, the texture process would already be done. In fact, the color assignment that I would wonder, I'll bake it to an item and I can use that in some container to do the initial material layout, which just rocks. It's so fast. And that's kind of what brought me to this is, uh, you know, usually I do a tutorial whenever I uh, you know, get the hang of something that uh, is relatively interesting or what I perceive to be interesting. You know, I'm into robots and stuff, but right, you know, like why don't you do organic stuff? You know, you can ask yourself, do lots of organic stuff. You know, I spent like two weeks recently just sculpting uh, to try to get better at it because I don't want to be totally on a circus. And yeah, I'll, I'll be back with something on that later, but you know, I try to make sure that I'm not just uh, you know, posting garbage that they do make videos that are worthy of things to get done because they don't use any relevant material. So, you know, whenever I'm making a video, it's because, hey, um, good news, everyone. You know, and just want to make at that angle. And um, to try to keep things as a, uh, you know, quality video. So, this piece here, the piece I affectionately called little troublemaker. We'll move it over and take it in. Something didn't work. So we tap the edit mode. Tap out. Didn't work. So I'm just going to remove it. Just, just go. And we're just not going to use that. I'm going to actually fix that one. Um, in fact, yeah, we're really, still not to the part where I fix it. Eventually I just get mad and I fix it. But just know that overlapping geometry caused by unaware doubling or doubling without scale will cause that to happen. And you just don't want that to happen. So, this one also is the uh, final one on the uh, small one in this particular video. If you're interested in the continuation of it, just know that um, it is a basic board to sign up for it. I made a chapter in, there's a book that I'm writing called that. Hard surfaces or a hard type or hard surfaces. Hard surfaces and you can call the times. Hard surface guys modeling, but that's just the only one that going down. That was a tongue twister. Sorry about that. But basically if you're interested in getting it, um, it also is gonna be um, this whole kit will be part of the uh, asset massive I mean uh, the uh, asset collection volume one which will be mentioned in the description below. But the book that I was talking about is um, basically on hard surface modeling. I just wanted to go over tips and tricks just in a variety of different packages on just making certain shapes happen uh, based off of tips I've received over time and working with uh, different professionals. And I've gotten a lot of input from a lot of uh, different people on different directions to take it. So this book is evolving. You know, originally it started out as me just making some rants in Microsoft and not Microsoft Word, uh, just this program writer, uh, which is an uh, open office. Um, and now, you know, designing the pages and in InDesign, trying to make it into something that is uh, a more interesting product. So that way you'll be glad to um, read it and, you know, get, get this information. But, you know, um, like I mentioned in the previous videos that I'm pretty, pretty big on utilizing time wisely, um, you know, like I always ask people, like, uh, you know, how do you utilize your potty time, you know, are you reading, you know, like, uh, you know, me personally, whenever I'm dealing with potty related matters, you know, usually reading or, you know, playing game or going through tutorials or whatever, or 
promote it in my computer or something, but, you know, even your time away from the computer, which you're forced to, um, be around people or watch movies that are boring or whatever the case may be, you can always use a lot of that time to catching up on your the artist magazine or just, um, you know, getting more knowledgeable about your stuff. But, I mean, usually when it comes to tutorials, I only watch tutorials when I first wake up. With that all aside, like I said, um, the, the prequel chapter on the kit, as long as well as the source files and the subtractive mesh kit, are all patron-only rewards, uh, as well as uh, part of the asset pack. And you know, otherwise, you could screen cap it right here, like a smart guy, and make this stuff and make better stuff, and just do it yourself. You know, that's the type of guy I am. You know, I'll see it. I'll see someone's parts. And, you know, the first thought that comes to my head is, uh, you know, your soul is mine because I am literally going to study you and absorb your soul and gain a better understanding of the stuff that you're making here. So that's kind of the approach that I have. In fact, if you know me on social media, you'll see me, you know, randomly comment on awesome projects being like, hey, man, what size shirt you wear? You know, what's your diet? Because I'm going to become you. That's how much I admire whatever it is I'm looking at. And that's, that's the enthusiasm I try to carry with me. But, you know, in recent times I've been going through some tough things that have uh, you know, weighed heavily on my ability to have more uh, morale as a the artist. So, right now I'm kind of fighting to come back and you know, keep my, um, my wits. Uh, I mean, not my wits, my, my enthusiasm going because, you know, 3D is a very hard build, and, you know, when the times get tough, you can't help but wonder, hey, if I get into the right field, because I can guarantee you, if I was in any other field, I would already be done, like, but 3D is just a lifetime of learning, you're just learning forever and ever, in fact, it, it, it never ends, the moment you stop learning, the moment you become irrelevant, it's like, hey, did you hear about this new program? No, because I'm, it's like using this program from 1935, you know, so... I don't want to be that type of guy. I always want to be on the cutting edge, you know. Uh, it's like sitting around the house and playing uh, the uh, Super Nintendo. You know, I could be just sitting around the house playing Super Nintendo. But instead, I'd rather be playing the latest gen, the latest console because who knows? Maybe they made things better at that time. So, you know, with that small rant aside, that has nothing to do with this tutorial. I'll go ahead and just take the side part duplicate it and cut it. Okay. So, uh, so we'll take your piece here. Okay. I'm going to create a face. I uh, see that having these, these transitions happen on the edges just instantly creates serious and slight kind of floor And you're gonna see me take this to spaceships and armor and all sorts of things. But at the end the goal is to end up walking away with clean geometry. And it's not that hard, you know, just the workflow alone that um of baking this and then cleaning it up a little bit saves me on quite a bit of time. So right now we're going to wait for this, and that cut is complete, and we'll take this and cut it right here into the side. So I want to come back and probably also do another video of expanding on this uh, for you YouTube guys. However. Um, 
this kit is definitely going to expand. Now, there's already kits I've made in the past for subtraction, and I plan on just going through and uh, locating some of their parts and maybe absorbing the ones that are interesting. But, you know, really, this is something that anyone should do. I mean, you know, find out what your shape library is, but more importantly, build a couple of pieces, duplicate those pieces, modify those pieces, and then take pieces, combine them with other pieces, cut them into those pieces using subsequent pieces, and you'll find yourself surrounded by uniques very quick. Now you see on this particular shape that I use the, um, the piece I call the, uh, the hook sled um, to basically slide down an area where it can nicely transition. Like I'm already looking at this thing and thinking, ouch, it would hurt if I had to lay these slabs in there and my finger got caught in there. Um, but luckily that's something that I don't even have to worry about with this video. Now it looks like I've been you know, talking nonstop for about half an hour. So the last segment, we will, I will spare you guys on. However, I do hope that y'all enjoy this video and definitely give this workflow a try. In fact, you know, even if you don't want to make floors, you should try making something even more complex, like a, a kiosk. Using a kiosk and using a subtraction kit on it would turn the work of, you know, making it into something more complex and futuristic, it would turn that into a task done in minutes. Um, you know, I can't stress this enough that, you know, speed is, is one of the, the main things that matter to me because, you know, I never know when the next time I'll get to come back and finish these projects out will be. So, I try to get as much done at, at one time. It's like, you know, even with the stuff I envision, you know, it's always a, a fleeting moment. Um, so you got to be quick at getting your ideas out there because who knows if you get some crazy idea for a project and that idea is still clear a week later. You know, sometimes an idea will stick with me for years. And sometimes it will just be just a second, just a sentence. Like, I got this idea, sentence, it's gone, it's evaporated, never returning it. Also, always play with the looks a little bit just to, um, you know, really get my contrast and gamma just, just right. But I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and happy morning.